So hi Flasstube, this is Tina Fraser coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. Today is Tuesday, February 19th at approximately 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm just coming to you with a little quick update. I just kind of wanted to um, step in and just um, hope that everybody had a nice Valentine's Day on Thursday, my husband and I ended up going out to eat at TJ's. They have a little steak dinner that they do for everybody that wants steak dinner. So we went over there for steak dinner. It's not exactly the best steak dinner, but it's pretty cheap and we enjoyed it and we had fun. And then Sunday was my husband's and my 23rd wedding anniversary. We got married February 17th, 1996 here in Columbus. Um, I'm probably going to attach some wedding pictures at the end of my video. These were from 23 years ago. So you can kind of see us um, back when my husband still had hair and had dark brown hair and <laughs> stuff like that. So you'll get to see some pictures of that at the end um, to kind of spread this out. And I also had yesterday off for President's Day. So um, hopefully those of you that had President's Day off yesterday got a chance to um, stitch and whatnot. I got a haircut and I also got my hair colored. Um, my husband colored, helped me color my hair last night after our friends left. We have um, friends that come over every other Monday for um, board games. Sorry if I'm looking at a different angle. I have the, um, the little webcam. Um, kind of in front of my laptop on my keyboard and I'm kind of looking at the um, <laughs> at the uh, uh, program behind the webcam a little bit so if I look like I'm looking down I'm kind of actually looking more towards the camera but anyway yes I did get a haircut I did get my hair colored um, if you're curious the color that I used to dye my hair this lovely shade of deep purple is by a company called Arctic Fox and the color that I use is called Purple Rain. Now if you were here and you could smell my hair, my hair smells like grapes now. Uh, Purple Rain from Arctic Fox smelled like grapes and it's it's wonderful. Basically I don't um, I don't tend to bleach my hair before I or lighten my hair before I dye my hair the darker color. Um, what I do is um, my husband helps me put the dye in and um, I put a shower cap on, sit underneath my hair dryer with the shower cap, blow my hair dryer all over the place to get the, ha get the hair warmed up. Um, kind of nice. Not really super hot, but get the hair warmed up. And I do that for about a half hour. And then I usually just sit for about another 45 minutes to an hour, just kind of whatever. So I usually have the hair dye on my head probably for about a good two hours. And it gets it this nice, lovely shade of deep purple. But this is called Purple Rain. Um, those of you that saw my last video, you've seen um, the hair color kind of fade to like a light uh, um, fuchsia, magenta, whatever, um, reddish purple. Um, that's after about four, four to six weeks of washing my hair and letting it fade. Um, but this is fresh. I did this last night. Um, so anyway, that's what I use. I use Arctic Fox and the color that I use is Purple Rain. Um, so a little bit of an update for you. Um, in my last video, I had shown you that I was still kind of working on the hands-on design year of celebrations, February. Well, I finished it last week. I fully finished it and it's hanging up on my wall, although I took it down to show you. But here is the hands-on design, February as I fully finished it. Um, this is one of those little magnetic boards. I got a pack of six of them from Michaels, little teeny magnetic little boards. Um, I used, for February, I used um, scrapbook paper. This is just heart scrapbook paper. I think I found at Joann's, maybe, or even Michaels. Um, actually, I think it was Michaels. This uh, flower one is also scrapbook paper. Let me take this off for you. So you can see this is also just scrapbook paper that is being held on. It's a little this is cardstock, scrapbook cardstock actually, that I cut down into a six by six square. And I just covered the metal block with the um, hearts um, scrapbook paper and taped it on there. Um, but uh, anyway, let me get this back on here. This is just a six by six foot square. 
And then I took my February, my February square, and I mounted it. I found um, these four by four um, little canvas boards at Blix Art Supply. You can see Blix on there. And I basically just used double sided tape to um, adhere the fabric or the stitch piece onto the back of it. And then I uh, used E6000 to glue um, some mag two magnets on the back. And basically all I'm doing is I'm taking this and just sticking it to the metallic board. The magnets are helping this stay on there. And um, basically I just kind of um, center the paper as best I can on the thing to get the finished look. So this is this is how it hangs on my wall. This is just a, a little bow that I had a little teeny magnet um, that I glued on to. So this is just magnetized up there. So I can just kind of swap these out. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to take any of the um, other five of these metallic boards and um, paint them. I thought I might paint them, like maybe do one for each season. So I'd have like four, four colored ones for the seasons in case I decided not to, um, not to, um, use like scrapbook paper but I think for now I kind of like the scrapbook paper um, but this is February February is done um, I'm really excited for that and I use I hang it up by this little teeny hanger there's a little teeny hanger here so it just kind of hangs on my wall just like that um, next to my television um, so I actually did start March um, March is coming along. I kind of need to work on it. I haven't really worked on it a whole lot. Um, but this is March from the Hands-On Design Year of Celebrations. Um, i go ahead and put this behind it so you can actually see it a little better. Um, there you go. Haven't gotten too far along on it. I just started it this last week and I haven't, I didn't really work on it much this weekend like I was thinking I was going to, but it is coming along. Um, but this is March and I'm using pretty much the called for fabric and the called for floss. I'm not really changing anything out. So that is where I've gotten on March. Um, other than that, um, other than that, I don't really have much progress. I don't have anything really new to show you. Um, the frosted pumpkin stitchery, um, Welcome to Pumpkinville, the second part, or maybe the first part came out. The second part came out either February 1st or February 15th. Um, the Tiny Modernist, Words to Live By. Oh, The Tiny Modernist, Words to Live By. So, I will actually, um, let me get that out for you. Bear with me just a second. So we have the tiny modernist. Here's my fancy, dan fancy dandy project bag for um, words to live by. So the next, the next part of words to live by is out, and do to do to do. There we go. So this is part two. It's called when it rains. So this, this is the section of the pattern. When it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. So this is the words to live by, stitch along. When it rains, this is the second part. So this is out. I haven't made any progress on this since the last time I showed it, but I will show you where I'm at now. I have only um, really got the, um, I've only really gotten the, um, part of the border done and not even a lot of the border so that is all I've gotten done on this I'll put this here so you can see it a little better there we go that's all I've done on words to live by um, so yeah and I've loosened this up to store it
Yep. But that is where I've gotten on the words to live by. So, I have a lot to do. I have a lot of catching up to do. Haven't really worked on much. Um, for some reason this past week, I just kind of found myself not really wanting to stitch a whole hell of a lot. So I didn't. Um, some of you know I am using the Jessica Yurka Four Seasons chart for, from Heaven and Earth Designs um, for the um, Stitch Around the World Challenge that Porsche, Par Porsche Parcher um, put up in her Stitch Talk Facebook group. Um, I've made the leg two. I haven't done a stitch in the leg three yet. Haven't done a stitch on it in the entire month of February so far. So yeah. Um, I'm also using that piece because it's in the Stitch Around the World. I'm also using that piece for the Stitch Mania by the Number Sal. Stitch along that happens every month. Where you have to do 1,200 cross stitches. Full crosses or 2,400 half stitches. Um, in your piece that you select for the month. Since I'm doing that one... Um, tent stitch, which is half cross stitch. Um, I have to do 2,400 stitches. I've done zero <laughs> so far for the month of February, and we're 19 days in. We have seven, seven more days? Eight, nine more days. We have nine more days in the month of February, and I've done zero on my um, four seasons thing. So, I don't think I'm really going to make my numbers for the 20, for the, um, by the number cell. And I'm, like, way behind in the Stitch Around the World challenge. There's some people that have already gotten, you know, 12, 20 legs or whatever into the, um, Stitch Around the World. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not there. I've only, I've only completed two legs and I'm not very far into the third leg. Um, so... Yeah, my my by the number cell <laughs> is not happening this month, I don't think. Um, so that's really all the kind of updates that I have for you. Sorry about the noise there. Um, and uh, don't really have a whole lot else going on. So that kind of got bumped off. Let me go ahead and recenter this. Yeah. So that needs to go back up on my wall. All right. So again, here's hands-on design February. Um, I will put that over here. So, um, like I said, I really don't have a whole lot to show you, but I did want to uh, actually kind of talk to you for a minute about a couple of tools. So I have some interesting tools that um, not many of you may know what they're for. So, I was doing some cleaning and reorganizing a couple weeks ago, and um, I had one part of this particular tool, because this tool is in two pieces, I had one part, part of this particular tool in my current um, travel pouch, and I wasn't using it what it's intended for. Um, give me just a minute. I'm going to pause and look something up. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. You'll probably hear one of my cats kind of scratching in the litter box, and I'm really sorry for that, but I'm not going to edit it out. But anyway, so um, I was going to look this up, but I, I kind of went to Google and realized I didn't know what to call it and what to search for it so I could give you links, but I'm going to try and find it. If any of you find the link for, for this, can you please put it in the comments for me because um, I'm not even sure what to call this anymore. So I had one part of this, and this is just a clear acrylic piece of plastic with a um, almost like a foam pencil grip a little squishy foam pencil grip on it so I had one piece of this in my um, stitchy bag it actually comes with two so it comes as a set exactly like this now this little tool a lot of people probably haven't seen this but if I remember correctly, this is to, to stretch and unkink your threads. So say you put your threads on bobbins, and you know how when you unwind your thread off the bobbin, you get those little kinks 
where it was around the edge of the bobbin. Um, if you take your thread and hold one end of your thread here and then take this and put it up against here and then pull your thread across these little rubbery things, just pull it across, I believe it's supposed to flatten your thread back out. I believe that's what it's supposed to do. And it's also supposed to work on, I think, metallic threads too. It's supposed to be really good for like stretching that out and getting it to lay better. Um, I believe that is the purpose of this tool. I'm not exactly sure what, what they call it anymore, but I happen to find my other half. So I'm gonna try and look up, look this up on Google to see if I can put a link to it down below or maybe edit the video and tell you what this tool is, but I don't know what this tool is. I know these uh, these little foamy things can come in different colors, um, but this is just uh, like clear acrylic, but I did find my, my two things. So that is one tool that I have in my stash that not everybody may have. It's just a neat little thing. So another thing that I have in my stash, this is the second one of these that I own, and I can't tell you where I got it, but my floor frame that I use for stitching has wing nuts on it. And I found this little device that I have that I'm gonna show you next. I found this little device, I think at a, at a stitchy store or at a craft store or something. Um, and I had to ask what it was for. And when they told me it was a wing nut chuck, I was like, oh, I need one of those. So I present to you my handy dandy wing nut chuck so you'll see here it's on a little ribbon um, so I can hang it off of my squirrel flame and basically what you do um, I don't have a wing nut to show you but um, basically what you do is you stick your wing nut in the groove and then you can turn your wing nut without hurting your hands so it's a wing nut chuck I don't know how many of you have scroll frames or floor frames or whatever that have wing nuts on them I don't have any here to show you, otherwise I would. But you can put this, you can put this, uh, your wing nut into the groove here, and then you just turn it. It acts as like a handle to turn your wing nuts and make your wing nuts easier to turn. So I have a wing nut chuck in my toolbox, my tool, my little tool bag. Here's what my little tool bag currently looks like. Um, it's probably going to change because I have something else to show you here in a minute. So in my little toolbox, I have my wing nut chuck. Wing nut chuck, say that fast five times. So I have my, my two little acrylic uh, thread stretchers or thread flatteners, whatever you want to call them, and my wing nut chuck. So yesterday when I was out shopping, um, over the weekend, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Over the weekend, I was watching a couple of different YouTube videos on various topics. And this one lady was showing how to use a snag nabbit. I have never had a snag nabbit before. And I was watching her video and I was like, you know what? I think I want a snag nabbit. <laughs> because since I do pin stitch, and when you do a pin stitch, you leave a little tail to start your thread and then you clip the little bits off as close to the fabric as you can get without clipping your fabric and without clipping other stitches that you've done. And so you sometimes you get this little itty bitty bit of fuzz kind of poking up through the top of your fabric and it's the leftover things. And I was always using a needle to try and poke it down or like, you know, scratching the back of the thing to try and get the threads to pull down through the fabric so there's no little fuzzy parts sticking up. And uh, frankly, I'm getting a little bit sick of trying to hide all those little itty bitty threads after I'm doing the pin stitch. So I was watching her video and I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought, of, I never imagined that I could use a snag nabbit. Um, some of you may know what it is if you do quilting or whatever, but I went and purchased a snag nabbit from Joann's. It's open because um, I kind of wanted to take a look at it. I opened up the package already. but. It's this little teeny, neat, well, it's not teeny, but it's this needle type of thing. It comes in this clear little sleeve. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you're going to be able to, there we go. It comes in this clear little sleeve. And you'll see one end, it looks like a typical needle, and it's, it's smooth. 
and the other end has the um, kind of bumpy texture on it. So imagine kind of, it's kind of like a little drill bit. Imagine kind of like a little drill bit. That's kind of what it reminds me of. So it comes in this little plastic sleeve. And when you take, take it out of the sleeve, so you have this little teeny needle thing. And I will show it here. So you have this little teeny, teeny needle thing. And it has the smooth bit down here. And then it has the rougher bit kind of here. Oops. Get this right. There, so you can see the smoother bit and the rougher bit, and it has a point on it. Well, maybe you can't see the point, but it has a point on it. Um, so basically what you do is you take, you take the pointy part of the thing. You're not going to be able to see this, but you take the pointy part of your thing um, down through the hole where the sticky up parts of threads, and it's technical term, sticky up, sticky up. But you take this, um, you take the point, the needle point of it, and put it down through the fabric into the hole where the sticky up threads are or the looser threads are. And you basically just pull it down through the fabric and the rough part here, the rough part will pull your um, loose threads or your thread ends back through the fabric and onto the back. So when she was demonstrating this, I was like, that, that's, that's pretty amazing. I think I want one. So I went out yesterday um, when I was getting my hair cut and shopping for some stuff for my husband and stuff on my day off. I picked up my very own Snag Nabbit. I got this from Joann's. Um, you can find these in the um, Notions, like the sewing Notions, you know, where they have like needles and... Um, bobbins for your sewing machine and the markers and like um, snaps and hooks hook and loop things and velcro and all that you can find this kind of in that area that's where I found it the sewing notions it's by Dritz it's called the snag nabbit I now have these in my possession so those are um, three tools that I currently have sorry I'm looking in my little bag actually I'll bring that up here those are three tools that I currently have in my possession that I use or will be using when I stitch. Oh, so I do have a wing net that I can show you. Actually, let me take out that too. So here's a wing net. This is what a wing net looks like. You guys have seen those. There's just a, um, um, a bolt, a carriage bolt. So you're going to stick your wing nut on, you know, you stick your wing nut on your thing. So the wing nut chuck, here's what's really cool. The wing nut chuck, now there's a big hole here. This is really, the hole is makes it really nice because if you have something where like your wing nut is say that far down on your thing, normally when you try and put the chuck on it, you know, it stops. But with the hole in it, you can actually put the metal part of your, um, bolt or screw through there and it gives you room and then you just twist it and you see how it like um it can it it'll twist your um wing nut off it's pretty cool so essentially like if you have a wing nut that's really hard to tighten or really hard to loosen you basically just let me get this up a little further you basically just take your wing nut put it in to the wood block just like that and you turn okay <laughs> and you turn and it just turns your wing nuts so that is um, that is a nice little thing to help you it's a wing nut chuck I'm gonna try and look these up um, after I get done recording the video and see if I can find some links for you and hopefully the links will be down in the description box but um those are just three of the tools that I have recently. And other than that, I really don't have any more updates for you guys. Um, the picture of this plus fabric came in. I showed that to you on the last video. Hopefully, I will be receiving an invoice for the February shipment. I know she's been a, she's changed the, um, the invoicing date and the shipping date. So hopefully soon, in a, another week or two, I will have 
my February Crazy Annie's Fabric of the Month Club shipment. Um, I still have to order the last installment for the Stony Creek um, Pattern of the Month that I showed you in the last video. And other than that, I really don't have a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, this weekend, so, some of you have posted on my last video that um, you hope that I enjoy what's coming, the event that's coming up this Saturday. My husband and I are going back down to Marietta, Ohio. As you know, my in-laws lived in Williamstown, West Virginia, which was right across the river, literally, from downtown Marietta, Ohio. You could sit on their front porch and watch the barges on the river and see downtown Marietta, Ohio from their front porch, literally. Um, my in-laws passed away last year and the house is gonna be up for sale very soon. Um, most, almost all of the stuff is still out of the house. Our niece is staying in the house, but she's, you know, she's only using basically the rooms on the lower level plus the bathroom upstairs. Um, she's staying there with her new son, my, our, nep our um, great nephew, um, until she can kind of get out and get a place of her own and until the house sells. That way there's somebody in the house kind of kind of keeping an eye on things to make sure nobody breaks in and steals, you know, whatever they're going to steal. But, so the in-laws house is being um, prepped for sale. And my husband has expressed to me that um, with the event on Saturday that I'm going to down there at the People's Bank Theater, I'm going on a, on a ghost hunt, which I'm excited for. Um, we are staying at the Lafayette Hotel, which is across the river. You can actually see it from the in-laws house, and you can see my in-laws house from the Lafayette. Um, we are going to stay at the Lafayette on Saturday night. I'm going to go to my <laughs> ghost hunt at the People's Bank Theater in Marietta and on Saturday night and then we're going to come home on Sunday so it's going to be another you know kind of visit down there that we're going to have um luckily <laughs> luck well luckily for me my husband was very generous and made a reservation at the Lafayette to stay on the third floor those of you that may or may not know the Lafayette hotel is haunted it's one of the many haunted locations down in Marietta and the third floor is the most haunted part of the hotel. So he made a reservation for a room on the third floor. So that should be kind of fun. I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to it. And um, so in light of our coming up event on Saturday, or my coming up event on Saturday, he's going to, you know, kind of hang out with Rosie the dog and just kind of visit with family if they want to come visit and, you know, maybe go down to the bar and have a few drinks while I'm out doing my ghost hunt on Saturday night. Um, but I am considering actually doing another sex segment on my YouTube channel um, for my ghost hunting adventures. And um, I thought I would call it something like TG Hat. T-G-H-A-T for Tina's Ghost Hunting Adventure Tube. <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if that will, um, if that, that will catch on. I'm not going to, I'm not going to create a new channel. It's just going to be, instead of having floss tube and diamond painting tube or DP tube, as I have now, I'm also going to include TG Hat, Tina's Ghost Hunting Adventure Tube. So, um, if you're interested in that, just let me know, you know, tell me what you think down below. I don't mind getting thumbs down. In fact, I think thumbs down are just as good as thumbs up. So if you leave me a thumbs down, that's great. You know, I know you're paying attention and I know you're listening, but, uh, so I am actually going to, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I thought I was going to write it out and show you, but what I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is calling it. Tina's Ghost Hunter Adventure, Ghost Hunting Adventures Tube, TG Hat. So it, it's, besides having floss tube and diamond painting DP tube, I'm going to be doing um, TG Hat, Tina's Ghost Hunting, TG Hat, Tina's Ghost Hunting Adventures t Tube. So um, I might do another installment before then, but um, 
uh, one of the ghost hunts that I was on two years ago was also down. All the ghost hunts I've been on have been down in Marietta just because, you know, we were down there all the time and it gave me something to do on a weekend. So I was, you know, I was able to, um, to just participate and it gave me something to do and it was, and it's something that's right up my alley and I really like it. And I totally believe in ghosts. Um, just, you know, all that. It's just, it's just something I've been interested in pretty much all my life. Um, but I thought of doing kind of my intro video, just showing you some of the equipment that I'm using and that I'll be taking with me. And also including a couple of clips of some of the EVPs that I captured back in 2017 on my first ever ghost hunt. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, just let me comments, you know, below and whatever. And um, you'll probably be seeing a video from me uh, maybe a li little bit later on in the week, um, depending on what I can film and get uploaded. But that is what I kind of am thinking about. I don't know how often I will record a TG hat episode, but, um, you know, it just really kind of depends. So anyway, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, just know that, um, if you see a TG hat video show up on my YouTube channel that you're currently watching for floss tube and or diamond painting, um, just know that that's kind of centered around my ghost hunting adventures and just some stuff that I'm learning. Um, I'm pretty amateur. I've only been on three ghost. Well, this will be my third ghost hunt. Um, I would love to do more. I would love to start investigating um, even with a group, obviously I, with a group. Um, but there's also some, you know, some equipment that I'm looking at, to get. Um, and I'll go over some of the equipment that I have um, just as like an amateur, a, a, you know, a solo amateur. I'm not looking to do this as, you know, to go investigate somebody's house for them, no. Um, but I would be interested in doing stuff, you know, like seances and stuff like that. But um, anyway, so if you do happen to see that video, don't be alarmed. I'm not completely switching over to that. But um, just know that if you see the TG hat beginning um, title of the a couple of last two videos or a couple of YouTube videos of mine coming up that it is for my <laughs> my ghost hunting adventures so anyway that being said I just kind of wanted to wish you guys a happy week I'm really looking forward to my weekend I don't know how much stitching I'll be getting done this week I'm hoping to finish March for the hands-on design year of celebrations and I'm also hoping to hear some more information about camp got a stitch from my local needle workshop here in Columbus crossed my heart there. That's the stitching retreat that I went to in last November. And I met Vonna Pfeiffer, the twisted stitcher and quite a few other people. It was, it was a heck of a lot of fun. And my husband has told me to go ahead and when they get the, um, information for signing up for the retreat up at the shop to go ahead and just start making payments because he really wants me to go. I had so much fun last year and it was, it was a blast. So, I don't know when my last, my next floss tube video may be up. Um, it could be a week, could be a couple of weeks. And I still haven't 100% decided if I'm going to do this vlog style where I get on every day or every couple of days and just do a little 10 or 15 minute update and then put them all together for you. Vlog style. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Um, I think just doing these videos like, you know, once or twice you know, a couple times, a, uh, once a week or like once every other week or whatever is kind of my, my format. But anyway, um, just one last thing before I go though, I want to thank all of my new subscribers. <laughs> I don't know where, um, I don't know where people are finding my channel. Um, if you found my channel somehow, um, please leave a comment below and tell me where you found me and how you found me and I would really like to know. Um, I have been watching a little bit of YouTube, uh, Floss Tube recently, but because college softball season has started, I signed back up for Sling last weekend so I could get ESPN and all the ESPN channels and the SEC network so I can watch softball. So I've been kind of watching a lot of softball this week 
And um, for some reason, I also got into one of the things I've been into this week is obviously softball. But one of the things that I kind of was all into this weekend, starting like late Friday night, <laughs> this is really weird, but I've been watching house fire videos on YouTube. You know, like uh, I came across this one video of a nest camera across the street from a house that suddenly started that suddenly caught on fire and was burning and burning and I just sat there and watched it for like the 25 or 30 minutes it was it was playing and I have no idea why I was watching this house burn I don't know it was just kind of weird and then I found it I clicked on another video that took me to another house fire and then another video that took me to another house fire and then several videos later I clicked on a hit and run accident where they were using the jaws of life to extract somebody out of their car that had flipped over I don't, I don't know why I was watching these, you guys. Kind of like that, you know, watching the Dr. Pimple Popper videos. You know, sometimes you just watch and watch and you can't tear yourself away. I've been guilty of watching Dr. Pimple Popper videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been. And the blackheads extractions, too. I know that kind of grosses people out. There's a one. There was one that was going around Facebook about two weeks ago about this earwax removal thing that was just kind of like yeah yeah it was kind of gross <laughs> so but I don't I don't know why it just you just can't tear yourself away from those I mean it's crazy but anyway so I've kind of been into watching house fire videos um oh earthquake videos too I've been watching you know live footage of earthquakes happening growing up in southern California you know I uh <laughs> I spent through my share fair share of earthquakes. Um if you're ever in if you're ever interested in hearing about some of the earthquakes that have happened in the past, one of the ones I went through, one of the biggest ones I've been through was the 1987 Whittier earthquake. So if you look up 1987 Whittier earthquake, I was there, I went through it, scared the bejeebus out of me. Yeah. So anyway, Enough said about that. So, um, so I've kind of been all into fire videos, earthquake videos, crash videos, and college softball. <laughs> so that's what I've been into these last two weeks. Um, anyway, so um, this is going on about 38 minutes, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave this here. Um, again, thank you. Thank you, thank you to all my new subscribers. I've had quite a few this last this last couple of weeks, and I haven't thanked you properly enough. So if you could leave me a comment down below telling me how you found me, I would really like to know because I don't I I kind of got lost in watching and keeping up with some of the floss tube channels, so I don't know if anybody shouted me out. Um, I mean, I don't know. I know Garon Totenbags had posted one of my videos when I talked about getting my bag, my project bag in Gramgard. They had shared my video on their Facebook group for their tote bag business. So if, like that, you've seen my video shouted out or shared or whatever online, just let me know where you found me. Um, I would really like to know. <laughs> and thank you for subscribing. I hope you get something out of this, and I hope you find it interesting. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Right, put them down in the comment section. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. Um, you know, and I, I do my best to try and respond to people and to let them know that I, I've got their feedback. Um, I, I like any kind of feedback, positive or negative. So you know, hey, even negative feedback is positive to me. So if you leave negative feedback, unless you're a troll and you are being just stupid, I will respond back and thank you for leaving feedback. But um, just know that if I do reserve the right to remove any of your comments, if they happen to be like, trollish so anyway just a, just a little just a little heads up there um, I do read the comments so just you know 
I like any kind of feedback. So, and I, I don't take I don't take negative feedback to heart, um, because sometimes you know the negative feedback has very valid points. So it's always a learning learning opportunity. So leave your comments below. Um, if you would like to know when I upload new content, even for the ghost hunting adventures that I'm going on, um, please be sure to subscribe and then click the notification bell um, down below the video. You should be able to get a notification that way on uh, when and well when I upload new new content. So thanks again for all my subscribers. Thanks again to the new subscribers. Just let me know where you found me, and I would really appreciate it. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. I will do my best to answer, the, answer any questions that you have. Um, I'm going to try and find a link, trying to find some information about my tool. So if you happen to know what this tool is, it comes in a pair. It's not two. It comes like this as a set. Um, if you happen to know the actual <laughs> technical name for this tool, um, let me know. And I will also try and find a link for the wing nut chuck. Um, you can find the snag nabbit at Joann's. And that's it for this week. So thank you very much. I hope you guys have a good week. I'm looking forward to my weekend, my ghost hunting weekend this weekend. Um, and hopefully you will see a video pop up of, you know, just whatever I decide to talk about regarding my ghost hunting adventures this weekend. So um, keep on keeping on because that's all we can do. And um, hey, Columbus is supposed to get four inches of snow overnight into tomorrow morning. It's going to make commute to work kind of nasty. So if you're dealing with some severe weather, I know California is getting heavy rains. My parents are out in California. Um, I know they're getting heavy rain. They've gotten like, what, 15 inches of rain so far this season, and they've never gotten that much rain um, as far as I can remember. Um, so yeah, anyway, I will see you soon. And until next time, stitch all the things, buy all the things, get all the stash, get all the fabric, get all the floss. Buy all the tools because tools are cool. Tools are fun. Um, yeah, you get to see some cool stuff. Anyway, take care and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.